Hi, everybody. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world in terms of Durkheim's disease research. I know there's a lot going on in terms of lipedema research, and there's usually questions about, well, what are we doing about Durkheim's disease? So there's my disclosures. So I just wanted to go back to the different types of Durkheim's disease, and just remember that this is all a work in progress. We don't have a gene, we don't have a biomarker, so we're making things up clinically to help us better understand what is going on so we can find a cure. So there's the diffuse type where you're gonna have small nodules all over the body. This can be on the top of the head all the way down to the bottom of the foot. Um, it is present um, in people of all sizes, both men and women, um, but it can also occur in very thin men and women as well. And the nodules can be very difficult to find um, unless your fingers know exactly what they're doing and they can be deeper into the fat tissue and not necessarily on the surface. Then we have the nodular type. These are much larger lipomas. They're in areas of the body that are similar to familial multiple lipomatosis. And there are people who have nodular Durkheim's disease are usually in families of familial multiple lipomatosis. So they're gonna be on the arms, the trunk, the abdomen, the flanks especially, uh, the thighs, and not as commonly on the lower leg, the hands, the feet, or the head. And then you can have a mixture between the larger nodules and then the smaller diffuse nodules. And then there's the individuals who they sound like they have Durkheim's disease, but they look very much so like they have lipedema, but they also have abdominal obesity. So we call, I'm calling that lipobesity right now. So I am funded by the Lipedema Foundation to do research on lipedema and Durkheim's disease. And as I mentioned yesterday, our goal is to populate a state-of-the-art specimen collection or biorepository with blood and fat samples as well as skin samples from people with lipedema, Durkheim's disease, and other rare fat disorders and also some control samples. And we have, uh, the majority we have, um, our samples are lipedema, um, but we do have samples of Durkheim's disease as well. We also want to develop educational materials for patients, medical students, residents, everyone on up to uh, physicians and beyond. And I'm doing this in collaboration with Dr. L. Ross. And we um, have in these educational materials information on Durkheim's disease. And we also want to work with multiple collaborators to understand the physiology of lipedema and Durkheim's disease. And we want to share our uh, biorepository specimens. We also are um, focusing on imaging subcutaneous adipose tissue. We also have MRI images. We have ultrasound images. We are in the process of writing that up, so I wasn't able to share those with you today. And this is my team um, out eating pizza at Oregano's <laughs> for Chris's birthday. And uh, so Chris Ussery is my research coordinator, and Sarah Algodban is my postdoctoral fellow, and Sarah works in the lab 100% of the time. She's very dedicated. She um, calls our samples her babies, and she's very protective of her babies, and she is um, uh, detail-oriented. She is extremely well-organized, and she's made it possible uh, for us to uh, make progress um, with these samples, and she is writing up papers on the histology of lipedema, Durkheim's disease, and um, angiolipomas as well. So this is an example of an ultrasound, just like um, Dr. Eicher showed you. Um, this is uh, looking at the brachioradialis area. If you're in the research program, we pinch that area. And uh, we use a different probe than Emily does. We use um, a more uh, higher megahertz probe, so it's more like doing a biopsy. Um, but we also use clinical probes like Emily does. And I think this picture helps explain a little bit of what that dancing fascia is that she pointed out. So here on top, you have the skin, and then you see these nodules here. These are fat lobules. And around the fat lobules, you see this thickened tissue here. And that thickened tissue that sits around lobules allows us to put our fingers down and feel the pearls within the tissue. So this is a picture of your pearls. 
And this is a patient who has diffuse Durkheim's disease, okay? So she doesn't have lipedema, she has diffuse Durkheim's disease. And you can see the muscle here and you can see some thickened fascia in the mu muscle, so this correlates with what Emily was talking about. And then we see other nodules, because we have this high performance probe, you can see the skin here looks really thick. That's because uh, we're able to uh, look within, we're able to actually look at the skin. We can see four millimeters of skin, which is amazing. And you can see this nodule here. I've got it outlined in arrows. It's very thickened down here, especially, um, but also over here. And you see what's in the center there? That's a hole, right? That hole is dark because there's fluid in there. That is a little vessel. And we think that this, um, in this patient with Durkheim's disease, is a vessel that's been leaking out into this tissue, causing a hyper echogenicity or, or a more whitish area here within this lobule and it's caught, this fluid is leaking out and sitting around the fat lobules and creating inflammation followed by fibrosis. So we think we have more than one type of nodule within Durkheim's disease and we see this in lipedema as well. This is one of my favorite pictures. This is a, a woman who has Durkheim's disease and when you get a biopsy, as I mentioned yesterday, they say, mature adipose tissue consistent with lipoma. And that's it, they're looking for cancer or no cancer really, or anything that you know, glaringly um, stands out. But there's really no doubt that this is a lipoma, right? It's clear. We also see a lot of angiolipomas in Durkheim's disease and in patients who I didn't expect. I didn't realize that so many patients with Durkheim's disease had angiolipomas. And you can see the enlarged vessels here in this angiolipoma and there's a lot of blood because when I cut into that angiolipoma, it bleeds. So these are the, the deliverables that we're trying to um, provide for Durkheim's disease from the TREAT program. We do have a candidate gene for a family with lipedema and lipobesity. We do have a candidate gene for angiolipomas and lipomas from a single family, and it's a really cool gene. Um, we're hoping to get two papers out, written in June at least, written um, on angiolipomas and the histology of lipedema. We also are trying to get out a paper on ultrasound of Durkheim's disease, a paper on MRI of Durkheim's disease and lipedema, and we enrolled our first patient with diffuse Durkheim's disease in the second Quadriva study to see if she would see any improvement in her tissue. So this is, um, there's a team Durkheim in Karolinska, at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. If you didn't know that, there is a whole team there that's really interested in Durkheim's disease. That's all they study. Um, they do know lipedema very well, and their goal is to try and differentiate uh, patients and subjects who have lipedema versus Durkheim's disease. So uh, this is Ola Vinquist, uh, Bo Christer, Sue Melgram, Sarah Schmidt, and uh, Jacek Krasinski. And this is uh, Bo presenting on uh, Durkheim's disease with, and Ola Vinquist presenting on Durkheim's disease. So they've presented on Durkheim's disease in multiple conferences. And this group is together because of two people, Jan Baggy and Stefan Eriksson. Stefan's a patient in Sweden and he has pushed us uh, relentlessly, <laughs> relentlessly to uh, continue research on Durkheim's disease. So uh, really a lot of credit goes to him. Um, they are trying to come up with some deliverables, so they want to make a difference. They've done physical exams, biopsies, taken blood samples, and looked at flow cytometry. And they're looking at the, the different types of Durkheim's disease. And uh, you can see that they um, have the nodular, the mixed, the diffuse. They have lipedema, but they also have lipobesity. So we are on the same page. And their focus is on the immune system, which is interesting. We've always wondered, is Durkheim's disease a uh, disorder of the immune system? Is it an autoimmune disorder? And they are looking into that. And this is, I just want to um, show you Birger Fager. Um, he was my mentor for Durkheim's disease. Um, um, he's from Lund, Sweden, and he worked with um, Hakan Brorsen and Emma Hansen. And there's uh, Stefan right here and uh, Ola, and then uh, a patient, friend. So um, they have submitted a grant to, when we submit grants here in the US, we submit to the National Institutes of Health. They submitted to Vettenskepsradet. <laughs> 
and the purpose is to address the possibility of an endocrine or immunologic, especially infectious origin of Durkheim's disease. And I know there's there's been uh, chatter for years and years on whether um, Durkheim's disease is the result of an infection and they want to look for it. They want to achieve a thorough understanding of the disease in order to establish a biomedical criteria for diagnosis. They want to develop new and effective treatment strategies for patients um, to prevent uh, disability and uh, progression of this disease. So that's been submitted, so uh, we'll see where that goes. So I wanted to let you know if you have Durkheim's disease, there is hope for new findings and treatment for Durkheim's disease in the next 12 to 24 months. Team Durkheim and the TREAT program plan on submitting a collaborative grant together on Durkheim's disease to help us distinguish Durkheim's disease and lipedema from each other. And uh, I think validating a gene will really uh, increase the interest of the NIH and additional investigators to research on Durkheim's disease. So thank you very much.